up, step right up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the greatest, well, second greatest show on earth. Boys and girls, it's my favorite time of the day. It's morning time. Morning time. Sun is rising. Morning time. Good morning, Lucy. Morning time. Morning time. Birds are singing. Morning time. Good morning, early bird. Bok, bok. Morning time, morning time, count your blessings, morning time. Good morning, Giuseppe. Morning time, morning time, bells are ringing, morning time. Good morning, Penelope. Morning time, morning time. How I love the morning time. Hi boys and girls, my name is Calliope. My papa is the ringmaster with the traveling circus. I want to join that circus and one day I will. But for now, I'm here in the circus's winter home in Calico Valley and I'm practicing my skills as a clown. One day, when I get them just right, my papa will send for me, and he'll let me run the carnival sideshow with the circus. And with me here are some of my best friends. Some of them want to be in the sideshow, too. You look really excited this morning, Penelope. What's going on? Oh, Calliope, you should have seen it. Seen what? The mouse. There was a mouse in the caravan. A mouse? <laughs> Well, that's nothing to get all excited about. Oh, but this wasn't just any old mouse. This mouse was, he was five foot tall. A five foot tall mouse? Hmm. Yes, and he was in the caravan doing all sorts of things. Like what? He came running out of the kitchen with half of the big bag of popcorn in his mouth then he started to climb up the curtains in the kitchen and started knocking over the pots and pans. Really, Penny? What else did he do? Then he went up to Giuseppe and asked him to make a big cheese pizza. You're kidding! <laughs> then the big mouse said he wanted to make a long distance phone call, but Giuseppe said he'd have to go to the can phone to do that. Then the mouse said he would invite all of his friends to come over and have pizza with Giuseppe. The mouse talks with a British accent. He does? Yes, and just before he ran out the back of the caravan and into the woods, he stood on his head and whistled Dixie. Then he said he'd have to go to bingo night and then just went right out the back door and ran off. A five foot tall mouse. A half the popcorn, asked Giuseppe to make him a cheese pizza, knocked over the pots and pans, asked to make a long distance call, invited his friends over, then stood on his head and whistled Dixie. Is that right? Oh, he was so cute, Calliope especially when he spoke with that cute British accent. Wow, Penelope, I don't know what to say. What a way to start the day. I think I'm going to go in and have some of that cheese pizza the mouse asked Giuseppe to make. Doesn't that just sound unbelievable, boys and girls? I mean, a five foot tall mouse running through the caravan, knocking over the pots and pans and asking Giuseppe to make him a cheese pizza? <laughs> I suppose it could happen. Hi boys and girls, it's me Penelope. 
Calliope will be right back after these messages. Hi boys and girls, I'd love to hear from you. Please write to me at Calliope, P.O. Box 1995, LaGrange, Georgia, 30241. And now, back to the caravan. What's that, Crumb Snatcher? You saw the big mouse too? He did what? He danced the chig with all the emus, then they built a bonfire and sat around and roasted cheese? And then all the field mice with the big mouse leading the way, went into the backyard with butterfly nets to catch butterflies? Crumb Snatcher, are you sure this all happened just the way you said? Wow! What a story! Okay, Crumb Snatcher, you see if you can catch up to the big mouse. Hello, this is Calliope. I'm sorry you wanted who? No, this isn't the Mouse House Cheese Factory. This is a circus caravan. You wanted an order of Swiss cheddar and Limburger? I'm sorry, this is Calliope, and this is the number 10 can. I'm not sure what number the Mouse House Cheese Factory is. You're welcome. Goodbye. Hello, this is Calliope. Who? The Better Mouse Trap Company. No, I'm sorry. This is the Circus Caravan. There's nobody here that makes better mouse traps. In fact, we've only seen one mouse in a very long time, and Penelope saw it, or so she says. Oh, you're looking to capture the mouse at your house, not at mine. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm sorry I couldn't help you. Good luck with your mouse. Goodbye. Wow, boys and girls. First, Penelope sees a really big mouse, and then the crumb snatcher sees it. Then I get a phone call for the Mouse House Cheese Factory and one for a better mouse trap, and <laughs> sounds like the mice are taking over Calico Valley. We'll find out more about it after these messages. We'll be right back. Hi, boys and girls. It's me, Calliope. I wanted to ask you, which one of my friends here at the caravan is your favorite? Would you like to have a picture of that friend? If you would, tell your parents to send me an email at calliope.clown at yahoo.com and let me know which one you like the best. Ask your parent to put in your mailing address and I'll send you a picture of your favorite. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to hear from you. And then Penelope told me that the big mouse stood on his head and whistled Dixie. And the crumb snatcher said that the big mouse was out in the backyard with the emus sitting around a bonfire at... Okay, Calliope, that's enough. I'm a no sure where a Penelope and a the crumb snatcher get at these stories, but I'm a tell you nothing like that ever a happened in a my caravan of kitchen. That it wasn't the way it really happened. Giuseppe, you mean to tell me that Penelope's not telling me the truth? Well, no, not really. See, there was a mouse, but it was a small brown field mouse. And it was only in the kitchen long enough to get a one kernel of the popcorn and a head out the door. Just one little brown field mouse? That's all, Calliope. Just a one a little a brown a field mouse. And a no standing on its a little head and a singing a Dixie either. Well, where's the mouse now? I'm a not know. 
It a run out of the back door, and I'm a no see it since. Well, I wonder why Penelope and Crumb Snatcher told me all those things. I mean, all they had to say was there was just a little brown mouse in the caravan. I'm a no sure, Calliope. But that a Penelope, she sure got a de imagination. That's a pretty cute story she tell about a de mouse asking Giuseppe to make it a cheese pizza. And the crumb snatchers part of the story. I mean, mice with butterfly nets trying to catch butterflies? <laughs> it's a funny to hear you tell it, Calliope. But do you know, both of those have a de good imaginations. I'm a no sure what can be done about it, though. It's Mr. McCall. I'm going to go see what's in the mail. I'll talk to you later, Giuseppe. Good morning, Mr. McCall. Good morning, lass. I haven't any mail for you, but I can never resist stopping by and saying a cheerful hello. Thank you, Mr. McCall. It's always good to see you, too. You look like you've got something on your mind, lassie. What might you be thinking about this fine morning? You may find this silly, Mr. McCall. But this morning, there was a little brown mouse inside the caravan. And well, Penelope, instead of telling me about the little mouse, decided that she had to make up this long story about a five foot tall mouse and a bunch of other stuff. And I, I don't know why she just couldn't tell it like it happened. Lassie, there's nothing wrong with wee Penelope. Everybody has a time when they tell tall tales just to make themselves look a little better. Really, Mr. McCall? Oh, I lass. I tell you, my brother Angus was one of the best tellers of tall tales in Scotland. He used to have me mum and dad worried about them until they realized he was just letting his imagination run wild. What did your mom and dad do? Why, they set up a little part of our next family night as a storytelling time, and Angus was given the floor to tell the tallest tale he could think of. Mom said it was a great idea because Angus wouldn't be making up things when he shouldn't be. He could use the storytelling time for that. Mr. McCall, that is a wonderful idea. I think I'll start doing that here at the caravan. That way next time Penelope wants to make up a story, she can tell it to everyone and make them all laugh. Now, there's the ticket, lassie. Well, glad I could be a wee bit of help. If you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of mail to deliver. Ta-ta! Bye, Mr. McCall. <coughs> Happy Monkey is here. Good morning, Calliope. Good morning, Happy Monkey. What's wrong? You look like you've been worried about something. Oh, it's Penelope and Crumb Snatcher. They made up this crazy sounding story about this five foot tall mouse inside the caravan, <laughs> but it was just a little bitty brown field mouse. I wouldn't worry so much about it, Calliope. After all, everybody has an imagination and sometimes they let it run away with them. Do you ever tell stories or tall tales, Happy Monkey? When I was little I used to. Now all I tell are Jokes. I knew it. Do you have a good joke for me today? Of course. Why do mice need oiling? Gee, I don't know. Why do mice need oiling? Because they squeak. <laughs> oh, that was a terrible joke. But it made me laugh, Happy Monkey. And I'll remember it and share it with Penelope. Would you like for me to take these groceries in to Giuseppe? If you don't mind, Calliope. Well, of course I will, Happy Monkey. Say, this bag feels different. What's in it? Cheese. It's what Giuseppe ordered. He said something about making a cheese pizza. Well, at least it won't be one to share with a five-foot mouse. Thank you, Happy Monkey. You're welcome, Calliope. Have a happy day filled with joy. I think it's time to talk to Penelope about that story she told. And I need to take this cheese in to Giuseppe. We'll be right back, boys and girls, after these messages. 
boys and girls, I'd love to hear from you. Please write to me at Calliope, P.O. Box 1995, LaGrange, Georgia, 30241. And now, back to the caravan. Penny, I wanted to talk to you about that story you told me this morning, the one about the big mouse in the caravan. Oh, that story. What is it? I just wanted to ask you if all the things you told me about the mouse being so big and all, if it was all true. Well, no, not all of it. It didn't really happen that way. I thought not. There was a mouse in the caravan this morning, and he did get a kernel of popcorn. I, I made up everything else. I thought so. But tell me, why did you make up all that other stuff? Well, it was to make the story sound better. There's nothing interesting about a little brown field mouse, so I added a few things to make the story sound better. And Crumb Snatcher. Why did you add those things to Penelope's story? I mean, did you even see the mouse? Crumb Snatcher, I understand that Penelope's story sounded so good that you thought you'd just add to it. And then, when you started to play along, you just got carried away with it. <laughs> I'll say you got carried away. That part about mice trying to catch butterflies with butterfly nets, <laughs> I just couldn't believe that. We're sorry we told a story to you, Calliope. I accept your apologies, but you have to remember, you can't tell stories like that because well, because it's not being honest. What is being honest, Calliope? Honesty means that you tell a story just how it happened and you don't add anything to it. No, you can't add something to the story that didn't really happen just to make it sound better. That's not being honest. Hey, I've got a great idea. Penny, Crumb Snatcher, you both have such wonderful imaginations. Why don't we start having storytelling time here at the caravan? Hmm. Penny, you love telling stories. And, well, there's a time and place for telling stories. So when we have storytelling night, why don't we invite everyone to tell their favorite stories? Oh, wow, that's a great idea. I can't wait for the first storytelling time. No, Crumb Snatcher, we can't build a bonfire and roast cheese. <laughs> can we pop some popcorn during storytelling time? Yes, Penny, we can do that. We just won't be able to pop that little kernel that the mouse took. <laughs> Boys and girls, when Bok Bok cackles like that, it's time for Calliope's Thought of the Day. Thank you, Bok Bok. And the thought of the day is... It's important to be honest and always tell the truth. That sound means breakfast is ready. But first, we must feed our friends because they depend on us. My friend Daisy, who owns the Fluffy Daisy Dairy, delivers my milk fresh every morning so that I can have it with my tea at breakfast time. Good morning, Daisy. <laughs> well, we heard a really tall tale today, Daisy. Penelope told us a story about a five-foot-tall mouse inside the caravan. So now, 
we're going to start having storytelling time here for everybody. Do the cows at the dairy ever have a time to tell stories? Really? What kind of stories do the cows tell? <laughs> That's really funny, Daisy. Thank you for my milk and have a great day. Thank you, Giuseppe. That Penelope, she is something else, eh? That she is, Giuseppe. She's going to be the star of our storytelling time for sure. Oh, I don't know about that. Giuseppe can tell some pretty tall tales himself, you know. Oh, <laughs> I bet you can, and I can't wait to hear them. It's time to set the table, boys and girls. I like to sing the place setting song when I do this. Won't you sing along with us? Penelope is going to help us. Fork on the left, fork on the left, spoon on the right, spoon on the right, plate in the middle, plate in the middle, cup right here, cup right here, napkin in the lap, napkin in the lap. When you set the table right, it makes mealtime a delight. I'm so glad you came to visit me today, boys and girls. And next time you're passing through Calico Valley, stop in again and see me. Don't forget the lesson that we shared. It's important to always be honest and tell the truth. And always do your best and never, never, ever give up. And remember, I love you. Bye-bye.